Hello people, David here and welcome to BTECT. Today I've got the OnePlus 6T. Now this is a phone that a lot of people are calling the best value smartphone that money can buy right now. But I don't really think that title does it justice. It makes it sound like this is not a high-end phone, but more of a well-equipped budget phone. But regardless of the price, this is definitely a high-end phone. Sure, there's a few concessions here and there, but OnePlus have made them in the right places to keep this phone's cost low while still delivering a flagship experience. To the BTEC regulars, thank you so much for your continued support. You know who you are and I really appreciate it. I take all your feedback on board, good and bad, so please feel free to let me know exactly what you think in the comment section below. And if you're feeling BTEC, it'd be great if you could hit the subscribe button, double tap the notifications bell, and smash the like button. So let's get on with it. Inside the box, you get the phone with a screen protector fitted, a gel style case, OnePlus's 20 watt dash charger, a special red USB cable to go with it, and the headphone dongle. And it's all beautifully presented. And in my opinion, OnePlus really are the best at presenting their phones in the box. From the front, the OnePlus 6T looks great with its 6.4 inch OLED display with a 19.5 by nine aspect ratio and 402 pixels per inch. It's got very minimal bezels and this tiny notch at the top. The screen resolution is down slightly on the other flagship phones, which I guess is one of the concessions that they have to make to bring this phone in at such a competitive price point. But for me, it's not a problem at all. This is an excellent screen, extremely bright, punchy, and with very deep blacks that do an excellent job of hiding that notch, which I really couldn't imagine anybody wanting to do anyway. I think the notch looks great. The notch houses a 16 megapixel front facing camera with a 25 millimeter f2.0 lens. And despite this lens being the only bit of tech inside the notch, the phone is still capable of recognizing your face and provides a very speedy facial unlocking system. But on the rare occasion that this fails, you do have the in-display fingerprint scanner as a backup tucked underneath the Gorilla Glass 6. Altogether, it's an extremely quick and reliable biometrics unlocking system. I find myself going to use the fingerprint scanner, but before it recognizes my fingerprint, the face unlock system lets me in. Now I'm gonna to need to be really picky to find any negatives to say about this phone. It's incredibly well designed, but over on the back, well, I think it just looks a little bit dated and I had to think long and hard to think about what word to use there. I just personally think it would have looked a lot better if they'd have just updated the design of that camera module. I get that the T is more about internal changes, but like I said, I've got to be really picky to find any problems with this phone. Internally, the OnePlus 6 is very well specced as we've become accustomed to with OnePlus. We've got a Snapdragon 845 processor, six or eight gigs of RAM, 128 and 256 gig storage options, dual SIM support, but no expandable storage. But more significantly, what I think makes this phone a real pleasure to use is the Oxygen 9 OS user interface based on Android 9 Pie. By default, you get the standard Android user experience with the three familiar Android buttons at the bottom of the screen. But if you click settings and scroll down to buttons and gestures, then tap navigation bar gestures, then you're given the choice between the original Android layout, the new Google gesture style found on the Pixel 3, that includes a back and a home button and lets you swipe up on the home button to go back to the home screen or swiped on it to switch apps. Or you get OnePlus's own gesture style, swipe up from the bottom to go back to the home screen, swipe up and pause to get your list of apps or swipe up from the bottom left or right sides of the screen to go back. It works great and is very similar to the gesture system on the Mate 20 Pro. The only difference being that on the Huawei, you have to swipe in from the sides of the screen to go back. This type of navigation is definitely the way forward. It's very intuitive and it becomes second nature very quickly. The battery has had a big upgrade over the OnePlus 6 as well. We now have a 3,700 milliamp hour battery. A lot of people said that the OnePlus 6 had great battery life, which I personally didn't agree with. When I was testing the OnePlus 6, it did struggle to get me for a full day. So an upgrade in this department is most welcome. And now the extra juice comfortably manages to get me from charge to charge. There's no wireless charging here, unfortunately, but if you've never had wireless charging, you won't miss it. And I guess that it is something that I could live without to get that retail price down. Before we go on, I want to say a big thank you to Direct Mobiles. 
as well as looking after us here at BTECT. They also have a great selection of the latest phones and at seriously competitive prices. Combine that with an amazing 23 years of award-winning customer service and you've got a really good place to go if you're after a new phone. Check in the video description below for a link to their deals or search directmobiles.co.uk. The camera system on the back of the OnePlus 6T is a 16 megapixel main sensor with an f1.8 lens. That's paired with a 20 megapixel secondary two times telephoto lens with an f2.4 aperture. I wanted to mention the camera app because I think it's probably the best design camera app that I've seen this year. It's clean and simple with everything you need right there on the screen. You very rarely need to go into any settings for anything. Even the video resolution can be changed very easily without having to go into a separate menu. There's a great pro mode as well, which gives you control of everything, including the focus. Long exposure time maxes out at 30 seconds and the max ISO is 3200. Although I have seen the OnePlus push it up to 6400, but in the pro mode, 32 is as high as it will go. There's even a histogram for serious pros. There are no manual options for the video, however, but the quality of the video more than makes up for this omission. The OnePlus 6T is capable of shooting smooth, stabilized 4K 60 frame per second footage. Here it is compared to the iPhone XS. But there is one caveat. Recording at 60 frames per second while stabilized is limited to five minutes. For me, that's not the end of the world, especially when you consider how good the results are. The footage is nice and smooth, regardless of which lens you use, and it even does pretty well if you're zoomed all the way up digitally eight times. It's really very impressive. And I've got to say, I do prefer this phone's video over the photos. The photos are still pretty good. The portrait mode gives you the option to change the shape of the bokeh balls. So you can change them from circles, heart shapes, ovals or stars. And OnePlus have included a new night mode to rival Huawei's party trick that they first started with the P20 Pro. The Pixel 3 has just been given the night sight feature too. So I'll be comparing the night modes of this phone, the Pixel and the Mate 20 Pro very soon. So do look out for that one. Overall, this is a great phone, no question. Definitely a contender for phone of the year. And that's not just because the specs are so impressive for the price. For me, it's mainly down to how the overall design of the phone is. Everything from the way it's presented in the box to you, to the brilliant operating system and new navigation gestures. The camera app is great. And even though it's not a QHD plus screen, the edge to edge display is excellent and great for watching content. The only real negatives are the lack of the expandable storage and no wireless charging. I'm not going to mark down the Full HD Plus screen as being a negative because it's such a good screen. Let's not forget that this phone is less than half the price of some of this year's flagships. 499 for the 628 option, going up to 579 for the 8 gigs 256 variant. It just goes to show you that the really big manufacturers are just trying to get more money out of us. There really isn't a reason that a phone in 2018 should cost over a thousand pounds, and OnePlus have proved this with the amazing OnePlus 6T. Anyway, that's it from me. Thanks for watching my review of the OnePlus 6T. It comes highly recommended. If you're not stuck on a particular brand and you don't mind trying out a manufacturer that maybe not everybody has heard of, then you need to give this phone some serious thought. If you enjoyed this video, it'd be great if you could subscribe, hit that notifications bell and smash that like button for me so you don't miss out on any new content from us. I'm David Wildman and this was BTEC. It's, it's, it's Arch Badge B.